Hello everyone, so I know you're probably eager to get into the art tour, but first I did want to talk about a giveaway that I'm having for this video. So Stationery Pal was kind enough to sponsor me again, and a haul from their store is actually going to be the giveaway prize. And so let's have a look at some of the stuff that you can win. So they sent me all these stationery goodies, and this time around there was a bunch of washi tape, some art markers, and of course pens and there were so many sticker books guys i honestly think i went a little crazy with the sticker books because it's just insane how much you can get in each one and so i got every single sticker book that i found on their website and that's a great thing about stationary pal too is that they are constantly hosting sales and events and i think they are having a back to school one right now so on there, you're going to find a bunch of great sticker sheets that you can get and also some bundles. They also have packs of die cut stickers and some scrapbooking materials if you like that. And in the past, I've also gotten some pretty good quality tote bags and jewelry from them. Earlier in 2022, I really wanted to get into journaling after seeing some cute ones on Instagram. And now I have this little ice cream notebook and I'm journaling and putting stickers in it to my heart's content. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for, if you want a chance to get your own Stationery Pal bundle, all you have to do is comment down below which artwork from this video is your favorite. And so you've seen the title. I'm going to be talking about my 2022 art pieces and I would just love it if you guys can choose which one is your favorite. And I would also really appreciate it if you can add a timestamp at the moment that the art piece appears in the video. It just makes it a little easier for me to know exactly which one you're talking about because my stuff doesn't have any names, you know. So yeah, that's all you have to do to enter the giveaway. And if you win, Stationary Pal will send you your own bundle of your choosing. But also please note that you may have to cover custom fees if that is needed to ship to your country. So yeah, there's that. So yeah, thank you Stationary Pal for sponsoring me again and for hosting this giveaway. And so now that we're done with that, we are finally going to get to the art tour. Okay, so art tour time. If I sound different, it's because I went into my mic and I messed around with the settings again to try to get it to sound better because a few of you have mentioned that I would like cut out sometimes because of my new expression. So hopefully these settings are better. And if they're not, uh, let me know because I will work on them again. But um, the way I organize this is supposed to be chronological, but there will be some moments where I will pull up some other art like out of order. Uh, but for the most part, I did try to stay chronological. This is actually like the third time that I'm recording this because the first two times had uh, I ran into so many problems. But the main one was that I was just talking too much and I had too many photos to get through. And so this time I reduced the amount of pictures. So uh, unfortunately, it's not actually everything that I drew in 2022. It's more like 70% of what I drew because I had to get rid of some. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just sorry about that. And also if you hear my mouse clicking, I apologize beforehand. I'm going to try to edit the clicks out, but sometimes if uh, I click while I'm talking, there's nothing I can really do about it. So let us begin. So here we have my first piece of January 2022. And I think you can see my mouse, right? So uh, this is actually commissioned by a client who has stuck with me for a really long time. Their name is Krisharu. And they're going to have quite a bit of commissions in 2022, actually. And uh, their character is, I think, based off of Watson from Apex Legends, whichever one this one looks like, the short blonde haired one. And if you guys know like my style by now from watching my videos, then this might look a tad bit weird compared to my current style. I call this one my shiny one because the hair is so shiny and there's a bit more shininess to the face too. 
you're also going to see a, a lot of portrait commissions because I did a lot <laughs> last year. Okay. So moving on, here is a Final Fantasy Viera commission. And you're going to see a lot of these too, specifically Viera ones and specifically Final Fantasy commission. So this is one of my favorites. And I'm going to be saying that a lot because I actually have a lot of favorites, but I think it was one of the first Vieras that I drew almost ever where I was actually aware that it was a Viera. Because I think in the past people have commissioned me of their Vieras, but I didn't know that like I didn't play Final Fantasy yet, so I wasn't aware of their specific traits that make them Vieras. And if you guys play Final Fantasy, you would know that Vieras have a very like specific nose shading that makes them look like um, they have a bunny nose. And I tried to kind of, you know, capture that here. And I think I think I, I did a pretty good job. Also, the hair. I love the way I did the hair. And if you can see, you could really see my pin light trick working here with the line art. And I actually didn't use my everything brush yet. And I would use a Sue cream brush. And I actually didn't overpaint a lot either in this style. There's this thing that I would do in portrait commissions, at least this, this style specifically, where I really tried to make sure that I was staying consistent. And so for, for the longest, I kind of felt like I was stuck in this style because I had to because this is what people were paying for and I felt that it was a bit wrong to kind of change the style up a bit so you're gonna see a lot in this style and uh, eventually when I when we reach the point in 2022 where I've closed commissions that's where you're you're gonna see my style kind of transform into what it is today but yeah this is this is one of my favorites so this one is a commission from a good friend and artist here strawberry cake and i'm going to try to put the names on the screen the names that i do mention and hopefully i'm on top of that and um i want to zoom into the details on here but i can't i can't zoom in on the b o o b s okay because youtube might flag me but anyway for those uh, gals on her chest I'm really, really proud of how I did them. But to be honest, looking at them now, they look a bit fake <laughs> because they look they look like too round. I mean, you could say that she's wearing a push up, but yeah, and they're very shiny. Her shoulders are definitely too small or too like inward. You know, they they need to be wider, in my opinion, if I ever if I were doing this again. And also, I, I'm pretty sure I remember struggling with the front facing perspective. Kind of feels like her nose is a bit off center, but uh, yeah, that's definitely off center. But anyway, ignoring that, look at this earring. I remember Mary specifically wanted this earring to be on here. And so I made sure to do a good job on it. And I really studied that reference. And so it looks really good, in my opinion. Also, oh my gosh, it's, oh, don't zoom in on that, okay. Uh, the arm, it, it, it looks a bit weird. Yet again, another Vieira commission from Final Fantasy. This one, I, I think I'm getting the hang of like the nose area. For this one too, I remember the commissioner um, gave me specific references of the eyes from in-game. And I really wanted to capture kind of the shape that the real in-game eyes have. And uh, I think I did a pretty good job. And, you know, hopefully you guys think I did too. If you do know how Viera eyes look like, they, these glasses, uh, they are, they're not it. They're not giving. Wow, there's, yeah, guys, I, I wasn't exaggerating. There's a lot of Vieras in 2022. Um, this one, I also think I did a pretty good job at the eyes once again and the nose, but uh, I don't know. I, I have some feelings about this because I don't know how to pinpoint it or if I can, but she just has a different vibe from the rest of my drawings. Maybe it's because she's a bit more gentle looking and cutesy rather than something else. Yeah, I don't know how to use words. I don't know how to describe things, but um, if you get it, then you get it. 
Okay, so this one was commissioned by Main Cow, who has uh, commissioned me a couple of times now. And their character is, I think, their VTuber model, who is a combination of a cat and a cow. So you can see the cow horns and the cat ears. And I, I think I had some feelings of like dissatisfaction when I first drew this. But looking at it now, I love it. I love how it looks. Although I will say that band-aid right here, it's way too small. But I kind of like miss doing blush like this. And also the jewelry looks, it's just, I didn't even try on the jewelry. Okay, I, I could have, I could have tried better on that. But let me just, uh, this is one of the moments where I'm gonna go out of order. And I'm gonna pull up their second commission that they got. This is their main outfit for character. And I actually did a draw with me with this for my uh, Q and A. And they wanted a kind of cyberpunky techie outfit also included right here. And they had a dress kind of uh, for formal occasions that they also wanted included. And it's crazy how different my style is compared to the other one and i think my favorite part about this design honestly is the little little cow clip on her hair look at that cow clip look at them i'm, I, I'm gonna try to be strategic with this one because i can't zoom in on the boob but yeah so this one is, as you can see from One Piece, it is Robin's pre-time skip design. I have a lot of love for her pre-time skip design because she just had a certain vibe that she no longer has now because of because that they whitewashed her, basically. But whatever, okay, I'm, I'm not gonna get into it too much because I might get into spoiler territory. Um, the main thing I wanted to point out with this is the hand someone in the youtube comments pointed out because they do have a, a speed paint for this she has like two left hands or two yeah two left hands because this is her thumb i don't know if like i just turned her pinky into a thumb while i was rendering and i didn't realize it but it's kind of embarrassing but hey really proud of the way i did these legs though they're very shiny i'm scared to zoom in on it too much but also I don't like this curve anymore. The curve of her B-U-U, not B-U-U-T. That's not how you spell that. B-U-T-T -T of her buns. I don't think like her bun is supposed to start there yet. Like I, I think it's supposed to be further up. It just looks kind of weird now, but I'm really proud of the way I did her face. And I remember I did post this on Reddit and uh, it made me realize that I don't like to post art on Reddit because people just are rude. So this is the one I did for Nami and color wise, I like this one more, but result wise, I like Robin more. I think it was like my first time in a long time drawing full uh, half bodies again. And so my anatomy definitely need needed some work. I can't zoom in on it too much, so I'm just going to I'm just gonna stay here. Uh, the shoulder looks weird because the arm connecting here. I don't know, it just looks weird to me. And there's just some things about her torso and like the way it connects to, I don't know, like just in general, the entire anatomy looks weird. I really just like her face, to be honest. And that's actually a comment that someone on Reddit said, is that they said that they didn't feel that the face matched Nami. And I was kind of just thinking like, who asked you? But anyway, not gonna post on Reddit again because I'm gonna get bothered by haters. But you know, who cares about what they said? I really like the way I did the face and really in the end, that's what matters the most. This is a Final Fantasy commission yet again, but this time it's not a Viera, it's an aura. It might be my favorite drawing of an aura because look at these horns question mark scales I like this this these ones um i've always been insecure on how i draw these and i'm really proud of this one 
But the way I did her eyes, or the way I just drew her face in general, I feel like is a bit different from my overall style. I would overpaint these eyebrows and I would fill them in a bit more so that they had less um, empty space in them. Because now that I'm looking at it, it just makes it just makes the eyebrows look pretty unfinished. Ooh. Okay, so we're getting into Percy Jackson territory. And this is my first ever Percy Jackson fan art, if you can believe it, even though I've been a Percy Jackson fan for like forever. But it is because um, my friend Calcedonix, who I've talked about multiple times now, she suggested that we should reread the Percy Jackson series together. And we did, for the most part. Those of you who know will know that I have a book channel. And I'm not going to reveal it if you, you know, if you can find it, then good job. And I drew this for my review slash gush, uh, Percy Jackson and the Olympians, the first series. To be honest, don't really like how it looks now. I don't like how Percy looks because I'm not very good at drawing guys. And I mean, I, I guess I could say that his hair matches kind of what I, what I envision, but his face does not, and also Annabeth, that, that is nothing how I envision Annabeth. I don't know, I just struggle with her hair because it's supposed to be like wavy in a ponytail and I feel like Annabeth probably wouldn't have hair that long, like that's pretty long hair, okay? Like if it was down, that would be very, very long. And imagine how long, how much longer it would be if it was straight instead of wavy. Anyway, I have this whip of the Percy Jackson guys that I drew and I just never got around to finishing. Uh, these were actually meant for my shop. Like I was gonna turn them into stickers possibly, but uh, I wanted to get in some practice on drawing guys last year. And so I was like, ooh, I'm into Percy Jackson right now. Why not draw the Percy Jackson dudes? So I didn't draw Nico. And a lot of people are probably going to be outraged by that. I drew Percy and then I drew Frank, which I was the most nervous for because Frank is considered to have a baby face. I've never really liked that about him, but I, I, I do like the way I drew him, eh, like the way he ended up. And then Jason, which I probably like the least out of all these. And then Leo, who is naked, apparently. <laughs> I didn't draw him with a shirt. Hopefully I will finish these uh, this year. Hopefully, <laughs> if I remember. So going back to where we were, this one is a sketch commission that I did for my friend Megata. And you probably recognize her by now. It's Beto from Genshin Impact. And I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong because I don't play Genshin. I used to, I played it for the first time. I did my first 10 rolls and then I got Amber twice. And then I restarted, I did the 10 rolls again. Then I got Amber again, and so I was like, you know what? I give up. Like, I'm, I'm not playing this game. <laughs> so, this was one of those moments where it's like, you've seen a character get drawn everywhere. And then when you finally draw them and you kind of get up close and personal with their design, you it's just a bunch of confusion. I was confused about a lot of things in this design. This thing in her hair, like, I honestly don't know what it is. And also, I have no idea what's going on in her hair can't zoom in on that too much but I'm actually really proud of the way I did these girls over here but anyway moving on once again one of my favorites I don't know I feel like at this point my style is changing a bit like the hair is it feels a bit more flat compared to the first few portrait commissions that appeared in this video and there's just something about the way I drew the hair strands like this and over here this character looks like and feels like a Makote, but I'm not sure if they are actually a Makote from Final Fantasy because the reference that I was given was just a, it just looked like a cat girl, like cat girl character, but these markings on her face are very reminiscent of Makote markings. So I wouldn't be surprised if it was a cat girl roughly based off of like someone's Makote. I really love how I did the eyes. This just like, I wouldn't change anything about this. Nothing at all. Or maybe I would change this, this thing <laughs> and add more detail to it. But 
it's just one of those pieces that I feel is perfect. Ooh, oh my gosh, behold a man. So this one is a Viera, but it's a male Viera. So there are some character improvement, character development on my part there. I decided to tackle this because it's a Viera. You know, I, I think I did a good job. It's just, I don't think it matches my overall style because I was probably just looking at references of how guys look and I feel that this one turned out to be a bit more semi-realistic than most of my art. But hey, I mean, it still looks really good. I don't really know what I would do to it to make it look more like my art. I don't know, maybe make the eyes bigger. Maybe lower the nose a little bit so that the cupid's bow isn't as tall. No idea, honestly, no idea. But yeah, there's that. So this one is the official outfit design that I did for Sydney. This first one here, the simple one, is actually my first draft from, I think, 2021. And I kind of gave up because I was frustrated that I couldn't design uh, her outfit the way that I wanted to. And really back then, the only thing that I knew I for sure wanted for her design was that she was wearing a yellow shirt. She had this necklace right here and she was wearing blue jeans. And uh, like, I mean, look at these shoes, like they're pathetic compared to these ones, at least. In 2022, I decided to just sit down and focus on finishing this design. And I went on Pinterest, I gathered references, and I followed Aruseli slash Night Zhang's video about costume design. And in there, she has like this uh, template that she uses for her mood board. For one side is references for um, a vibe or like a like fashion. And then the other is for something else. Hold on, let me try to pull it up so that you guys know what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is this is what I'm talking about right here. So one is the aesthetic or mood, and then the other one is actual fashion pieces that I would like to include and then like a, a summary of the character. You know, I literally I literally just ripped this off of um, Araceli's video and you guys should really check that out if you want some tips on like designing. So I applied like, you know, everything that I saw here to the design and I think turned out pretty great. When I first drew this, I actually felt a bit unsatisfied with it for some reason. Now looking at it again, I'm honestly baffled that I was able to do something like this. It's kind of one of those moments where I'm like, how did I do that? You know, because I'm like looking at this now and I'm like, it looks really good. Probably one of the only things that I would change about the design itself and not the actual drawing is I would change the jacket because for this jacket, I just wanted it to be puffy. I didn't have a design in my mood board, mood board for it. And so I kind of just winged it. And I think it looks, I don't know, not that great. And so I would uh, change the jacket if I could in the future. So I'm just going to zoom in on some details here. So she has like a Sid bracelet and beads and her earrings and her hair. Going to get it pretty pixelated here, but here's her necklace. And uh, a chain, she has a chain and also another chain-ish bracelet. And then a look at her shoes, all these, and then I like this sock some reason I changed this one to be different but yeah really proud of this design all right so I'm gonna try to speed things up a bit and talk less about each one because I don't want this video to be three hours long okay but uh this one is my first ever glam sheet that I did some of you uh some of you might know that this is like a style that I started doing for commissions and this is the one that started it all and basically, I think after designing the Sydney, I just really wanted to kind of get in some practice and actually finish like almost in one sitting, basically in the same day, because after doing so much commissions, I would uh, I don't, honestly, I would just get fatigued whenever I drew. And so I would like sketch for one day and then not draw again that day. And um, 
I would do it by step. So like sketch uh, is dedicated for one day, lines are dedicated for another, and then coloring is dedicated for another. But this one, I think because it was personal art and not a commission, I got really excited and I just completed it. And then it launched a completely new commission style. So this one is actually a design that I did for my friend Calcedonix. Once again, gonna mention her. And it's because I remember her talking about this pink haired OC that she had in the past. I think I was taking a break from commissions at this time and I just kinda, I wanted to design another character. And it turns out she didn't actually have a design for her yet. So she just gave me like a mood board or a Pinterest board. And uh, she let me put together a quick design for the character and honestly I really like it. It doesn't exactly match um, my style but it does match Kals's for sure. Like look at this skirt that is a very Kals thing and if you didn't know Kals is also an artist and a VTuber so please go check her out because her art is amazing. But um, I don't know what this thing is like I don't know why I put it there maybe i didn't like how the nose and mouth looked and so i just covered it up but it looks terrible like that net mask thing i hate it but love everything else about this though um i don't completely know how much of this design Kals kept because i think she did draw this character again for her expression sheet but i will have to go look at that later Ooh, so this one is one of the few half body commissions that I did in 2022. And this one was one out of the four pieces that I put in a poll in the community tab on um, which one I should break down the layers of because I was planning for one of these pieces to go into the actual clip suit to paint file and to just take you on a tour in the layers, just, you know, to kind of get the good details of the piece. and. Hopefully, I will have time to actually do that in this video and it doesn't make this video so, so, so long. This was kind of the one that I wanted to win, but I think it was like the last one. I, I think it had the least amount of votes. I'll show a screenshot here of uh, what it looks right now, the poll. This one has a special place in my heart. It was the first time in a really long time that I'd actually fully rendered something. And I might talk about this one a lot, actually. Gonna zoom in um, her face. Personally, I feel like doesn't exactly match my style. It's a bit different than what you might be used to seeing from me. And it's actually different from what I expect of myself. But overall, I still really like it. I mean, look at this nose. I think that's one of the best noses I ever drew, like ever in my life. This half body was meant to just be sketch lines colors. When I colored the sketch, I just fell in love with it. I got so attached to the sketch and I could not bring myself to line over it. What I did was just like completely rendered the piece uh, starting from the sketch. So I, I cleaned up the colors, the flat colors, and I bravely merged it all into one layer and I started rendering. There's just so many things I love about this. I, I love the face. I love the way her necklace. And I actually I used inspiration from Gen Z, who I believe is the 2D artist for the game Hades. And a Gen Z style, if you're familiar with Hades, it has a lot of black shadows and they do a really good job at shading the armor in Hades. And so I pulled up the Hades uh, art and I was just studying the heck out of those armor pieces because I wanted to just embody that when I shaded this necklace and I'm so proud of how I did it. Like this was something that I was not aware that um, I was capable of. And even the jewels look, look great. And it's just one of the things I'm most proud of myself for doing in 2022, to be honest. I can't zoom in on them, um, them two sisters on her chest, but so uh, let me just do this real quick, okay. So these I'm also really proud of. Just don't look at the green part because honestly, I think the green part looks a bit cheap. This piece right here. And also the hair. That is not how I shade hair now. This is how I used to shade hair back in like 2019. And it was pretty fun to kind of uh, go back to that, to step into those shoes again. There was a 
a point in my life where I was obsessed. I mean, I still am obsessed with Kelsey Beckett's art. I'm really name dropping a lot of people here, but Kelsey Beckett is an oil painter who does portraits and the way she does portraits is absolutely amazing. And if you are familiar with her art, you can probably kind of tell where I got this um, hair rendering style from. Like it is very inspired by her work. So this is Percy Jackson fan art. Again, I should have included this in the Percy Jackson section, but she's just gonna be here for now. So this is Hazel from Percy Jackson. And it is not only Hazel, but it is Valenxi's design of Hazel, another name drop. So Valenxi is one of my top favorite Percy Jackson fan artists. And I love, love, love the way she, that she drew Hazel in one of her pieces. And so uh, I basically did fan art. And so here is that. And it gained me a follow from them and it was one of the most exciting moments of 2022 because I got noticed by one of my most favorite artists so it, that was great. This is another half body commission that I am really really proud of uh, and this was in the same batch as the other half body commission that was fully rendered and so I wanted to stick true to that because they both did pay the same amount of money and um, I fully rendered this one too from the sketch. There was a lot of insecurity when I was working on this, actually, because I was like, oh, uh, like, no, not camo. Like, I've never drawn camo. It's like one of those things that I avoid, but it turned out really good, honestly. And there's a lot of texture that you can see here if I zoom into it. You know, it's just dots, you know, but it, make, it really adds a lot. And this uh, jeans is just lines, you know, and I just took those from the you to paint materials library i think there's texture in her hair too yeah yeah again just some dots uh, but it adds a nice subtlety to the texture of things so this one is an art trade so i did like i think a batch of three art trades with um some artists uh, i can't pronounce the name of this one so i'm just gonna put it on the screen so their part of the art trade is actually my background that I use now for my PC and this character was really fun and because this isn't a commission I allowed myself some room for experimentation and I think I worked on this in Procreate a little bit but um, as you can see there's a you know like there's just some looseness that is visible in the way that I lined it and it gives it a certain charm and this is around the time where i kind of learned that being loose is good being sloppy is good sometimes and i really love how the dress turned out this hand could use some work i feel like the hand's a bit too large it's one of those where i'm slowly but surely getting the hang of how i like to draw backgrounds because uh if you go back and you look at all the other things that I drew for commissions like uh, the half bodies and the portraits they don't have backgrounds they just have white backgrounds but for this one I was like you know what I'm gonna get out of my comfort zone and I'm actually gonna do backgrounds I'm no longer going to be scared of backgrounds and um, it was a beginning of uh, you know just a bit more confidence this is the other art trade and uh, the background is a bit similar Personally, I just love this pose. I'm gonna write down the uh, the name of the artist that I traded with with um, for this one. This is their character, and honestly, I love this character's design. I think they're supposed to be a vampire, and I challenged myself with a, a bit more of a dynamic expression and a bit more of a dynamic pose. And I think I did a good job on the expression, except the lips got kind of wonky and uh, really proud of how I did the hands and uh, the shading on the fingers like how there's kind of a gradient on them is something that I actually took from um, this artist's uh, reference sheet because I liked how it looked and I, I thought it would match their character well. Basically almost in everything that I drew before this uh, I used a Sue Cream brush on Clipsia Paint Assets, but this time I used the Homebrew Zaku brush. 
sorry, I uh, had to clear my throat. Oh God, I, I can I can hear it in my voice. It's it's taking a toll. I've talked I talk too much. I'm kind of losing it, but I'm gonna try to get through this video. So um, bear with me here. This brush is the Homebrew Zaku, which is a great great thick brush to use for sketching. But this time around, I wanted to use it for lining, and it just I love the effect that it did or that it had. And over here, you can notice a difference. So this wing right here, this bit, this part is a homebrew Zaku. And then this more textured line is using the Sue cream. And I merged them because it, I, I didn't want these lines to be as thick and I wanted them to be a bit more subtle. And that's just some stuff to kind of take home in your mind for when you do your own art, you know, maybe it's time to experiment with thicker line art, you know, try it out, see how it works for you. This is the third uh, art trade, can I mention her a third time, that I did with my friend Chalcedonix. Basically, this uh, character is Chalc's like assistant in her stream an assistant to her persona because her persona is a bunny queen and her name's Rira or Rara. I, I'm not sure quite how to pronounce it, but it was, she was so fun to draw. Uh, once again, I used the homebrew Zaku. There's not a lot of overpainting going on, but it was the most challenging one because Kals's designs are so detailed. Look at these belts. I spent a lot. Of, I'm going to zoom in on these keys because I spent so much time on them. I'm really happy with how they turned out and I just uh I love this it's also one of those moments where rare on the rare occasion where I like the line art so much that I don't do a lot of overpainting. yeah those are the three art trays that I did in 2022 we're gonna backtrack a little bit and this is a design that I did for Zabella the only thing that I really wanted I wanted her to be wearing purple, and so I designed this uh, right one. Uh, I felt a little bit unsatisfied with it. This was basically based on, once again, a, like a Pinterest board thing that I made. And then I was like, oh, I feel like it could be a tad bit better. And so I designed this pink one here, and I couldn't decide which one I liked better, and so I kept them both. And this is just it's basically concept art so it's very rough and messy so her hair used to be like this it was just down and um the first time i drew her it was actually just wavy and so this time i reworked it to be more realistically curly to to match uh you know realistic black hair and uh, her hair turned into just this into this and it's a bit hard to see here so i'm gonna go to this picture so the top part of her hair is kind of like drawn back into two pigtails while the bottom part of her hair is still just down. And you know, obviously there's a lot of baby hair and other curls going out and just kind of escaping. And I want her hair to still have a messy feel to it. I don't know how much of this hairstyle actually makes sense. <laughs> it probably doesn't make a lot of sense realistically, but I think it's a whole lot better than just her hair being down. So yeah, once again, these are Zabella's official outfits and I draw them interchangeably. I don't know which one I like a lot, but I think this pink one is the one that I've drawn her in the most. So yeah, here is an example of me drawing Zabella in that outfit. And I just chose pink one because um, I was thinking of like this background and it just matched it more. And I actually drew this on Procreate this is my Sydney portrait that I also did in Procreate. And unfortunately I can't pull up the um, the video time lapse for that one because the, for some reason the resolution got fried in the video. I think because it was cropped from like a bigger canvas maybe. It was kind of a turning point in my style where I realized that these are the colors that I like to work with. Like this is, almost the epitome of what I want my style to be and it kind of just let me know what I'm capable of. Uh, this used to be my YouTube thumbnail, or not thumbnail, icon, but then I changed it to Sydney's Halloween 
for October, and I since then um, I forgot to change it back. But um, one day I will change that back. But it's also my Twitter profile picture, and it's um, my Instagram profile. It's just a profile picture that I use for everything now. Okay, so this one is another half body that I did for 2022, and I'm gonna gloss over it right now because I will be talking about this a lot more when I do the layer breakdown for it because it's actually the one that uh, won the poll. So look forward to that. It will probably be timestamped. So if you're curious about this piece already, go skip to that and then come back here later when you're done with it. This one is one of the first glam sheets that I did and it, it is of the commissioner's Skyrim character. And um, I challenged myself with drawing this armor because I feel like in normal cases, I probably would have declined it because I didn't want to draw armor, but I'm glad I challenged myself with this because I think I did a really good job with the armor. It's just that there's a few mistakes where um, I forgot to add the highlights on this shoulder arm thing and I forgot to color these in because they're, you know, supposed to be a different color. But yeah, that's just some stuff, some fun facts about this piece. This one was uh, commissioned by Helixel, who is also an artist, so they will be name dropped right here. And their character is uh, it's absolutely great design. Um, they allowed me to choose an outfit for them in, um, just from the references that they gave me. And I chose this one because it looks like a star. It looks really cool. I actually ended up attempting to animate a blink thing with this one and I think I did a pretty good job so here is the gif version and it's just some twinkling in her eyes and you know blinking I think I can zoom in on this and you know there's some work that's needed on this but it was uh my only and first animation in 2022 and it, it was just a little fun to do that so this one in a, so this one is another half body commission and it is of someone's DND &D character who is supposed to be like a magician slash sorcerer. One of their specific requests was that uh, if there could be some type of magic casting going on in it. I remember looking up specifically like League VFX concept art to figure out how to draw fire in the way that I wanted to because I'd never really drawn fire. And so I, I studied some of that and I applied it to this and I didn't want to draw just generic like red fire and so I went with blue and I'm really glad that I did because it looks really cool. This piece also has little to no overpainting because um, I just love the, the line art so much. It's a very detailed line art that I'm not totally used to doing but it turned out to be some detailed line art. And so um, I valued that line art and I didn't cover it up. And uh, if you can notice, I'm actually using my, my everything brush by now. This one was the piece that kind of launched my career on, on social media. Believe it or not, in the first half of 2022, I actually was struggling to get followers because I was plateaued at around 7,000 or 9,000 and I really wanted to reach 10,000 followers because it, it had been a milestone for years. Cal's did this expression sheet and I saw it and I was like, ooh, like I would love to do this too and just practice some expressions and it'll give me an opportunity to draw my characters while I'm on break from doing commissions. And so I did this and I drew them and I also put this in the community post uh, for the layer breakdown and I might break this down for Patreon because I, I love it a lot and it's a really good example on how a lot of things can change during overpainting and it was one of the first times that I actually did overpainting and I was like wait I really like how this turned out and so I was like, let me try to do that again. And so I did it for all of them. Like jewels changed a lot during um, the overpainting process, but I can't show you now because it didn't win the poll. But yeah, this this post, it, it got like 20K likes, maybe 18K likes on Twitter. And it was the first 
thing that I ever posted that really got that much attention. Like I got like 2000 followers from it. And so I was over 10K. It is honestly pretty crazy how much people's view of you changes once you reach that threshold. People who no longer saw me as a small social media artist, but now I was like bigger and they expected a lot of things from me. And so it was, there was a lot of learning experiences with that. And, you know, now I have a YouTube channel. And so it's, it's pretty crazy how things can change within like a few months. So this one is Penny from Stardew Valley. And I tried my hand at pixel art, but there's a very specific method that I use to kind of like do a loophole around pixel art. Basically what I did was I drew the, the picture normally and then I sized it down to pixelize it. And then I sized that up. I did this with the intention of eventually making a Stardew Valley portrait mod, but I am not good with pixel art. I realized that it just doesn't vibe with me. And it also took me forever to do these two expressions. And then I looked at how many expressions I have to do for each character. And it's like, like seven or something. And I'm like, I ain't doing that. Like that is too much time dedication for something that I'm doing for free. In my wildest dreams, I would, but it just, it, it seems like too much of a time commitment. But I wanted to show this one because I do really like how this uh, Penny portrait turned out. Although I think I drew her hair wrong. Like, I think there's supposed to be two buns or whatever this thing is in her hair. I don't know. I don't really understand her hair, to be honest. So this one is in my art vault where um, no one's really seen this. I might have posted it on Patreon. I don't remember. Probably not. This was um, a t-shirt design that I had ori originally intended for Jules because I wanted Jules to be wearing in a t-shirt that said aliens. I ended up not going with this t-shirt design. I ended up going with a different one. So for some reason, I don't have a picture of, um, or like a, an actual reference sheet yet for Jules, but I did design her as well. So I ended up designing all the characters that I wanted to, but this is her, um, t-shirt design that I went with. It's a, it's a bit grungier, you know, than the other one. This is her belt, you know, her jeans once again all of this is taken inspiration from pinterest boards that i found um but yeah this is jules's uh design you know look at this this is something not a lot of people would have noticed and unless you zoomed in on it but it says in my goop era slurped up uh what does it say oh squelch i think is what it says uh, this doesn't say anything specifically, I think. This is a fan art that I did of Era from Dislight, the mobile gacha game, because there was a time in 2022 at a phase where I was just completely addicted to Dislight. I even gave them my money at one point, which is crazy to think of now, but I don't really like the way her, her face turned out, and I kind of struggled with their hair, but... The part that I was looking forward to the most in drawing this was her skirt. And I love how it turned out. I don't know why I turned Southern there, but I did. And this was also retweeted, I think, by the official Dislight Twitter account. I was like, oh my gosh, they noticed me. But yeah, and I think it was reposted on Pinterest. Um, so that was an experience where, you know, I get to read all the comments on Pinterest when I found my own art randomly. I was happy to see that there were some people in there actually saying, like, oh my gosh, this is Ayoops' art. You know? So thank you for those people for including my name in the Pinterest post. And, you know, it wasn't just a complete repost. This one is a Percy Jackson character that I revived from when I was like 13. And I created this character who was supposed to be a daughter of Hypnos. The thing with her is that I was like, wouldn't it be really funny if the daughter of the god of sleep got insomnia? And there's a whole lore on why she has insomnia, but I can't talk about it now because um, I don't want this video to be too long, but basically it has something to do with Morpheus. So this one is a glam sheet commission and it might just be my most favorite one. Like 
Like, I love how this one looks so much that I honestly want to turn it into a print, but I can't because it's a commission. You know, it's not my character. This character's color scheme just vibed with me so much. The, the thing that the commissioner wanted was for her to wear multiple different outfits because she's supposed to be very into fashion. And so I got to pick from like a Pinterest board that they sent me and it was really fun to just draw these uh, different outfits. And the like the teardrop thingies on her face, like the makeup was also really, really fun to do. Okay, y'all, I, I had to take a small break because um, my throat was feeling it. It still kind of is, but I really want to get through this video in one try. I don't want to have to re-record re it again. This one is a collection of bus commissions that I did. It was a new style, actually. Uh, a new style that was based off of the expressions things that I, I did from my characters. So I'm just going to choose which one is my favorite, and it is actually this one who is like um, a bear character. They got bear ears. And I just really love their design. There's like this cool outfit that they have. And for some reason, I'm so proud of the way I did this hand. I'm, it's one of those times where I'm just like, how did I do that? Like, I really love this style of hand that I did. I mean, don't get me wrong. I like the other ones too, but this one is just has a special place in my heart. Oh my gosh, it's Mr. Cupid. The commission that launched my YouTube channel into this madness that I'm doing right now. So if you guys can remember, Mr. Cupid is the commission that I was drawing in my very, very first draw with me. I just see this um, piece as a turning point in not only my career, but also my life. What it did for my YouTube channel not only gave me an audience like a bigger audience for my art but it also gave me another source of income that has freed me basically from ever having to do commissions if you guys remember the first picture that was in this video i said that it was commissioned by squishiru this one is also commissioned by squishiru i actually ended up drawing them again for a second commission that they did of this character but uh, I will not be showing that in this video. Let me just zoom in on this face because I'm really, really proud of how I did this um, overpainting. And this is actually the one that I was working on in my coloring process video. And these lips are my favorite part about this piece. Just, just look at them lips. This one was an adopt bust that I did because I was, um, in the mood of designing a character and i was really inspired by one of my favorite drag queens monet exchange monet i think like she had an outfit on drag race pit stop and also maybe sibling rivalry i don't remember but there were two separate outfits that she wore on two separate videos where she was wearing green hair and it was this specific shade of green that i just loved so much because it matched her skin tone and so I wanted to create a character based off of that, but I also wanted it to be a bit grungier, kind of edgy. And so I added a net and she's wearing kind of like a sports jacket and she has like this thing in her hair, which I'm really proud of because it looks cool. And yeah, and it was bought by this person right here. So don't steal it. This commissioner wanted a full body outfit design actually it was really, really fun to work on because they basically just handed me this character. They have like a bumblebee outfit, like a very bumblebee themed design, which is why their hair has, um, you know, honey drips and they have honey comb, just like, what's it called? Pattern uh, freckles, which I think is really cool. And they got the ears, but the commissioner specifically wanted kind of like a, a florist uh, outfit for them. And I don't remember if I put together a Pinterest board for this, probably didn't, but it is kind of crazy what I did with this because I remember first putting it together and then um, I was messing around with a color scheme. And so there, there were some versions, the initial sketch that I sent to the commissioner, I sent them a few combinations. So there was one where 
the shirt was white and then the apron was blue and the, and the collar was yellow. Then there was one where the shirt was uh, yellow, the collar was blue and the apron was white. Or there was one where the shirt was yellow, the apron was brown, and then this, the collar was, there's a lot of combinations going on. And this is the one that she chose because I mean, look at, look at these buttons. They're so cute. I wish I had buttons like that in real life. And the bees, the bees. Sorry, I got a little bit aggressive there about the bees, but just, just look at them. They're so cute. I want to make like stickers of these bees, to be honest, but I haven't gotten to them yet. Um, the only thing is these flowers, you best bet that these flowers are only there so that I didn't have to draw hands. Haha. <laughs> Everyone does it. You know, look at these really cool. I just love the small details, you know, like the little, little yellow things on their pants and bees and yeah, just uh, really proud of this design. This one was a bus commission of a book character from, uh, I think, Legendborn. I think it's Brie Matthews is their name or her name. And um, I don't know much about the series, but the commissioner luckily gave me some context where uh, the book series is very like King Arthur-esque. And so I gave her some nails that have some King Arthur designs. It's literally just like kind of stars thing and then like kind of like a shield design. Really fun to work on. I love this character's color scheme. Get to mess around with it some some in some places like the uh, earring and the things in her hair. But I really love how the cover has like this blue and red gradient that I uh, wanted to include in her hair and it was really, really fun to work on. This one is a full body commission that I'm really only including because of the way I drew the shoes. And I also really like the hair and the top half of the body. I'm not too crazy over the pose now because it looks a bit stiff and awkward, but it looked good when I saw it on Pinterest. I just, I don't think I did it right. <laughs> I love her face and also like the accessories that she has. It's a really cool character design. And just look at these shoes, bro. I don't even remember where I got the shoes. I don't know if I picked the shoes, if I designed the shoes, or if the commissioner gave me a reference for them. I wish I could remember. You would think that I would like know if I designed this, but um, I probably didn't. I probably just found something on Pinterest. I don't think I could design something that looks this nice, but. Oh the frogs this was my first attempt at drawing desert rain frogs because i got obsessed with these round little things after um, seeing them on youtube came across ninja frog i think is their channel name and they posted this frog um like scratching itself and it was a desert rain frog and it helps me sleep at night like watching those cute little videos of these frogs help me so much mentally because i would have trouble sleeping because i would get like anxiety at night for some reason there's a cat and a bee here you know like why are they there <laughs> this was supposed to be practice for a frog sticker sheet that i to this day still haven't done but i do have um but i do have a sticker of this one because i i colored this one specifically and i turned it into a sticker this is a redraw that I did of my green haired character that I have since then named Olivia Wren. The, the story behind the name is on Instagram. I asked for names and then I saw Olivia and I saw Wren. And I couldn't pick which one I liked better. And so I just put them together. Zooming in on this, it is probably the best example that I could think of, of how I really did just embrace the uh, sketchy, messy style that I gravitate towards now. One of my favorite parts of this is this hand. Not this part of the hand, that looks a bit weird, but this part of the hand. Look at those nails. It just, it just looks nice to me personally. For some reason, I really like it when um, fingers take a more square-ish or rigid like shape instead of a circular or round which is why I don't like these ones because they're more circular, like pointy, or not pointy. Um, they're more 
I don't know how to explain it. Like, you know, they're they're rounded tip and they're not squared tip. And so I wish that uh, I drew these like these. This is Jules and I also really like the hand. And uh, I drew this because I realized that Sydney and Isabella both had their portraits of their new designs, but Jules didn't. And so I wanted to draw Jules and I also wanted to include a hand in there because I was having a lot of fun um, practicing how to draw hands and also getting into the, the hang of drawing nails. Um, there is also some problems that I have with her eyes. Like I think I just liquefied too much and then they ended up looking weird. This one is like a singular bust commission that I did one time because I needed extra pocket money. It turned out so great. I, there's just a, so much difference in how well I do with the commission when I'm only doing one and I know I have all the time in the world versus when I'm doing 10 in one month. When I do 10 in one month, it's like the first three look good. And then the last three, you can kind of tell that like I'm getting fatigued. And so they, they don't look so great. But this one was a single batch of a single commission. And uh, let's just say I had a lot of fun with the background and I had a lot of fun with the eyes. Just look at those eyes. Look at those um, bottom lash shadows. And there's a lot of texture going on here. Although, what, what went on here? Why is there just a single streak of red there? Is that a mistake or did I mean to do that? This one is one of my October Halloween projects that I did because I wanted to design Halloween costumes slash um, outfits for three of my characters. And there is a secret in this one, which for some reason I got a lot of hate on on Instagram when I revealed it, but I posted on Instagram one day that, that I hit a SpongeBob, one of my art pieces. And I hit it back in October and it was because like I was drawing it and I was streaming it to my friends and they were just like, you should, you should like just hide a random SpongeBob in there and see if people notice it. And no one noticed it. No one ever pointed it out until um, I like revealed it on Instagram and people started looking for it. And then some people actually found it. If you're wondering where it is, here it is. There is your boy, SpongeBob. So I think some people got mad because they were like, I was looking for a fully colored SpongeBob, but no, it's just a little doodle. I seriously don't understand why so pe so many people got mad. Like I had to turn off comments on the reel. Like the reel has like 500k views. Maybe like 10% of them are hate comments. Like people just getting mad at me. They're like, that's so small. How did you expect us to notice it? And I'm just like, that's the point. Like you're not supposed to notice it like a lot. Like it's supposed to be hidden. Yeah, now you can see it very clearly. And if you go back and look at my um, draw with me with it, you might be able to see it when I zoom in on this area. So this is um, the second Halloween design. And don't worry, there's no SpongeBob in here. I didn't do it for every single one of them, but this might be my favorite. I just love the colors on it. And I wanted to zoom in on this bag right here because She's supposed to have a pumpkin in there, but I just realized that that's like a really small pumpkin. There's no way that a pumpkin could fit. I mean, like, and then there's like a potion or whatever. And I'm like, what the heck else could be in here that it's just weighing this bag down this much? I just have like, I, I noticed that um, one of my favorite things about designing is that I just love putting patches on stuff, a fault that, I see in this design is right here in the skirt. This has two layers of ruffles, but then this one only has one. And then this one also only has one. So like, why does the top one have two? And then this one has two, 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 two. This is Zabella's design. It might be my least favorite. It's probably the one I struggled with the most because I wanted Zabella to be a ghost. I wanted her to be wearing like a torn up white dress and I kind of wanted it to be almost a historical dress because she might be from the past or something and she's been dead for a really long time. But I also wanted to merge it with a mummy 
which is why she has bandages. And I actually struggled with uh, figuring out what color would look best as bandages. And uh, somehow I landed in blue. And this is like a, a ghost crown thingy that I saw on Pinterest, but I changed it a bit because they had different types of ghosts and I changed it to the types of ghosts that I drew. I think the best part about this design is like her head. You know, there's a ghost earring. There's the, um, what are these things called? The hair ties that are puffy, the scrunchie, and then all the things in her hair and just in general, her hairstyle. Because I think this looks really cool too. Um, but just after that, like this skirt makes absolutely no sense. Where does this skirt go? Like. You know, there's this here, right? And then it goes up here. But like, where did it go? There should still be skirt here. I, ooh, I don't remember putting my watermark there. Whoa, guys, can you tell that like the amount of time I've been talking for this video is kind of taking a toll on me. I feel like I'm going insane. Like I'm just getting distracted by everything. But anyway, um, my watermark is cool. Just remember that all of these are available as a uh, full body stickers for $4 each. So if you want them as stickers, go check out my shop. Although I think my shop is closed right now. You know, when it reopens, they'll still be available there. Ooh, I forgot this was in here. He's just a little carrot guy. He's just, uh, yeah, he's just a carrot and that's it. Really, it's just a little baby carrot. I was supposed to turn this into a sticker, but I really haven't. One day he will actually be alive and he's gonna be out to get you. So this one is another like sketch thing that I did randomly of my OCs. And I've talked about it plenty in videos, but uh, you guys know that I love historical romance and I kind of just wanted to draw a historical romance alternate universe of my OCs where they're like all drinking tea together and they're all probably turned British. They're just hanging out, gossiping about whatever. This is my portrait of Isabella that I drew for the specific reason of turning it into a print. And because uh, Sydney, Isabella, and even Olivia Wren had their own prints on my store, I wanted to give Isabella a print too because I didn't want her to be left out. And plus I love Isabella. And I, I wanted to successfully make a print of a dark skinned person and like basically get down the settings that I need for my printer. And it was a lot. It was a lot of adjustments. You get to see that adventure if you watch my Instagram stories, but basically I printed her out like maybe eight times uh, until I finally got the adjustments that I needed where her skin didn't look too red. If I printed it out just like this with how it looks like right now, like this, the printer would make her just red. Like she would just be absolutely red and the shadows here would disappear. So this is the adjusted version. And as you can see, her skin has just like lightened. Let me put them side by side. So the difference here is that her skin has obviously gone up a couple of shades, which is necessary for um, the details to show up on the printer. It was to up the contrast in the details of her skin because there's not a lot of contrast going on in the original piece actually. And I needed to increase the contrast in her hair also. So this one is a commission from another artist that I absolutely love, Mazamuno. Style-wise and color-wise, it has to be one of my favorites because I just, uh, I drew this so confidently and it, it helped me realize that, you know, I've really grown as an artist because looking at this, versus what I did in the beginning of the year. Yes, maybe this one is different in a lot of ways where it's, it looks a bit sloppier, but I think it has a lot more personality than... I just have a lot of love for my current style, which is a, a great place to be as an artist. This one on the left is the first piece I ever drew in 2022, and this one on the right is the last one I ever drew, and they were both commissioned by the same person. They were both commissioned by Skrisharu. Gotta say, it's amazing to see the difference. There's a lot of difference in facial structure. There's so much difference in the way that I shade the hair. And there's just even so much difference in how I shade the nose and how I do the blush. 
so yeah we have now reached the end of my 2022 art tour i'm just i'm so glad i did this because it was honestly really fun for me to to you know see everything that i did in 2022 well not everything but most like it's kind of like a trip down memory lane and even though it's not even that far back it's only one year if you guys want me to do these for other years like 2021 and 2019 2018 2017 i have folders of my art dating back all the way to 2015 you know like i could roast my old art if you want if you want to see my old art i'm willing to do that although i'm hoping that those videos will not be as long as this one because you can probably hear it in my voice but it's taken a toll <laughs> on me because i've just been talking for two hours i still haven't even done the layer breakdown that i mentioned before so that will be the last thing for this video and i'm gonna record that in different sessions because i need a break okay so i'm back with hopefully a fresh voice here we are with the layer breakdown or um i don't know what else to call it like a layer tour basically i'm gonna i'm gonna go through these layers and show you the nitty-gritty detail details of how i made this piece so first i'm going to talk about it while i zoom in a bit if you remember uh this piece right here what happened with this one is similar to that other piece that i talked about which will be on the screen where um, I sketched it and then I got really really attached to the sketch because I colored it and but sometimes during the sketching phase I feel that I need to get a handle on what colors that I'm actually going to use in the finished piece and so I colored this sketch and now I'm gonna I'm gonna show you the sketch so this is actually the sketch but that's not the first sketch this is the first sketch like i always do i just posed in the mirror and took a picture of myself and used that as a reference and then i drew over that again in basically a second sketch where i put the clothes in and everything so i put the clothes on i drew her hair and i drew her face i wasn't really caring about the correctness of things because I was, you know, just not caring, to be honest. So this is the colored sketch right here. As you can see, I group things. This one was actually supposed to be in here. And I don't name my folders, even though I should really get into the habit of it. Lately, like this year, I started to mark them with the colors, but I didn't do that for this one. If you see me kind of clicking through these, it's because I'm also confused on which layer is which. So this one is the color sketch group and I basically just laid down the flats and I shaded some of her face to kind of lay down the foundation of the overpainting. And yeah, there's not a lot of detail going on here, but you could see my pin light technique working. I don't completely remember which brush I used for this area right here. Um, but I do know on these stars, that's the Sucreme brush. So within this group is a bunch of layers that would, you know, be uh, rendering or overpainting depending on how you view it. Usually in smaller pieces, I would just do all this on one layer. Because this is a big piece and it gets a little scary and um, I'm, you know, I'm afraid to mess up. Then I do it in layers and sections. And I always think it's fun to like turn it off and back on just to see the before and after. And this is, you know, you could really see the impact of rendering here. Except I didn't touch her eyebrows. And maybe I did that in the hair layer possibly, but... Yeah, you could see everything that I changed about her face. So this layer is more details on the hands. I added nails and some more uh, shading and some highlights. Basically, I did this on a different layer because I was afraid of messing up the entire hand completely. And so I did it on a, on a different layer. This one is the ribbon here and yeah, I basically just cleaned up everything around it. 
For now, it looks like it's over the strand of hair, but that's because the strand of hair is going to be a layer above it and I haven't worked on it yet. So this is the hair layer, this one. Boom, for, after. So there, it's still kind of rough in some areas like the edges. Usually the edges, um, I clean it up after I'm actually finished with the whole piece and then I merge it all into one layer. That's when I clean these up. And so it, it still looks pretty rough over here. Yeah, it looks pretty rough, but I did clean up this strand, as you can see, and her bangs and her eyebrows are also included in this layer. This one is the ribbon on her leg, but it's basically kind of just like flat colors. I didn't really um, finish it. Maybe I was feeling lazy. Okay, so this one's a big layer. This layer is a... Uh, adding details and cleaning up the clothing that she is wearing pink and blue into the shadows then eventually i added purple and then i was like you know what why not add some yellow in there too to kind of complement the stars and so i just have a bunch of colors in in the shadows you know it's it but as you can see it's still not completely clean there's still a lot of cleaning to to go on here what happened in this layer is I cleaned some of the shadows up, like uh, over here. You can still see my mouse. And then I covered the stars because I didn't really like the way I drew them. So here's the stars layer. So basically, I just re-added where they were before. If I can turn off the other, yeah. And i just cleaned them up i redid them in a very clean way now all the stars are consistent with each other and i added some shading with it now this is the good stuff right here because it's when i start to put a lot of detail into the stars so right here i added some shading in the clothing and then i outlined the stars and um it just it adds so much i literally just give it an outline and then now it looks pretty good so this one is the beginning of cleaning up this hair accessory that she has for some reason i didn't do it with the stars probably because it's kind of its own separate like thing and so i just separated it from the rest here i covered up the star underneath just to kind of add some shadows underneath the actual thing but I don't remember uh we'll see if i bring that star back that was covered up so this one is the highlights which i think is just it's just it's like magic you know just how much it changes the effect that these things have and it just it really just makes it pop out at you a lot more okay so this is a big layer wow i put a lot of information on this layer so this is before and this is after before, after. I just added more to this piece and it's looking pretty finished here, except I think it might be missing some highlights. So these are the highlights. It looks pretty cool if you ask me. Moving on, this is just a little placeholder for the star right there. And then, you know, some glow effect for the placeholder. This one, I was messing around with the highlights that could possibly be on her, but I don't think I went with these. I don't think I ever cleaned them up and included them in the final piece. These layers here that you see are actually correction layers. If I can give you a better look at what they say. So this one is a pin light layer with a gradient map. And you can't really tell what it does, to be honest. It's, it's super super subtle those of you who can see it that's great for you <laughs> but I, I don't think most people will notice what is actually happening here but this saturation layer this one's a bit more noticeable but it's also still pretty subtle let me just zoom in it's it's really noticeable on the reds here that okay like that's pretty noticeable right but Basically, what I did is I increased the contrast here on the correction layer. And if you don't know what correction layers are, you can use them 
if you go to this layer menu here then correction layer and then there's all these correction layers that you can do and it just basically you're able to correct your piece without having to target a specific layer you have all these options here too if i just chose a layer then i click edit and i go tonal correction it's all literally the same options except it will only apply to that layer the correction layers whatever is underneath them is going to be affected by that edit if i put a brightness and contrast everything underneath it is going to be affected by that brightness and contrast and i just like using them because i could also set it to saturation and if i put this to 100 percent, you could really tell what goes on so this is with the saturation layer and this is without like there's a huge huge difference except 100 percent is too much in my opinion so i bring it down to 50. then here um it's backwards because i did flip the canvas at one point it just notes for myself to remind me like what else i need to clean up so like one this thing two clean up the stars three clean up the dress four clean this ribbon thing up five add some highlights and glitter six don't forget about the star like you know it's just it really really helps because sometimes i do forget about some stuff and it creates mistakes so that's like the preliminary rendering basically and what i do is i take this entire folder here all of this information and i duplicate it so that in case i have to go back i have something to fall back on and this one is basically the final piece more or less as you can see a lot happened and we're gonna go in and dissect that and you know it's making me realize that this breakdown is pretty long and they probably should have just made it its own video so let's see the before and after i just got rid of some layers because it might be too much information right now but here's what's going on look at the face the face i cleaned up the highlights and gave her some glitter and um if you can see that it suddenly gets like pretty clear or much crispier than this version like this version is crispier it's that's because i use sharpen on the final piece because i just really like the um the effect that it gives it here, this accessory, I added the, I don't really know what these things are called, dangling things, added that. And uh, you can see here, I added some glitter and also the shadows underneath it. And I cleaned up the edges. Then on the hair, I added some highlights and I cleaned this strand up. And the hair also has the, the dotted texture that um, I showed before. There's some cleaning up going on around here. I added uh, small stars around the bigger stars. And I did that with some handy brushes that I found on Clip Studio Paint Assets. This piece of hair also got cleaned up. You know, it, it got put over this clothing. Then here is the really good, good bit right here section. There's a lot going on here. The star is insane. Okay. Then here I added some shadows and some glitters to the gold. And then I cleaned up the uh, middle part that is supposed to be connected to her waist. And I gave it some texture. And I also added that texture onto here. And I think I just hand drew like one pattern. I hand drew this pattern and then I duplicated it. And then I created, you know, the entire pattern with that. And I got that from the reference. And it was also visible here, except you look at that mistakes, mistakes. That should not be there. And also this should not be there. This is a good detail here too, because I added some of that, um, glittery highlights also on the clothing and not just the golden parts and i added some highlights 
from the star onto the hands. Then with the skirt, let's see what changed. I cleaned this area up. Cleaned the ribbon. And then added more stars. So here I actually lowered her lip here. So before, after. Zoom in even more. This is before, after. So before, after, before, after. I mean, it depends on you. It's a very subtle change, but uh, I felt that it was necessary. And then with the background, here is everything that I did with the layers. So I added some lines. And then I added some uh, white borders around the black lines because I like to do that. And then I added some screen tones to just add a bit more texture to the piece so that there's that difference right there. And then uh, this is actually like this. Just to kind of make her stand out more in the background because if that wasn't there, it, you know, she kind of blends into it too much and I need her to stand out. Then this is the stars around and... And this, something that I made using these brushes. Okay, I can't find them, but basically you can find any neon brush that's free on Clip Studio Paint and it'll probably look something similar to that. And that's basically everything. You know, this is the finished piece and my, my watermark is here on the bottom. I didn't really hide it this time, but... Um, so let's look at the before and after differences between the, the initial rendering and then the final touches. So this is before and this is after. Before, after. Now there's a lot going on here. And these other layers are pretty unimportant. Like they don't really add anything to the piece. They were just there for uh, placeholders. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown and also this art tour. It has been a long, long video. And if you got through it, then thank you so much for watching. And I really hope that you actually enjoyed everything that I talked about in this video, or at least most of it. This video was a lot to make. I would actually honestly love to do it for the other years, except if I do do that, I really need to pace myself, be more strict with how much I talk about each piece because I, I feel like I talked about some stuff too much and I just get stuck on tangents like I probably am doing right now. But yeah, hope you all enjoyed that. Remember to join the giveaway if you want a haul from Stationery Pal. And how you enter that is commenting which one of these pieces was your favorite. And please include a timestamp and maybe a reason why. You don't have to include the timestamp and reason, but it just makes it a lot more fun for me to go through the submissions. So thank you for being here and see you all next time. Goodbye.